Football. Can't escape this bullshit. ESPN, the global leader in sports. <laughs> Welcome to the 2020 Pop Fantasy Football Awards, brought to you by PanelsOnPages.com. I'm Jason Eyes, representing the third place Gotham Rogues, and joining me this week, representing the fourth place Brooklyn Dark Knights, Pop Fantasy Football Commissioner Tito Cruz. Breaking news, guys. I'm reading that the XFL is currently invading the NFL headquarters. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> representing the eighth place Tell Him Kelly Eats Band Aids, Pop Fantasy Football One Commissioner Dan Mahoney. Uh, Tito, is the rock there? Because that would be kind of badass. <laughs> and representing the seventh place, Cam Diffie Do, Cam Diffie Don't, the 2019 Pop Fantasy Football Champion, Jose Guzman. Uh, I'm going to send Mel the first picture to the scavenger hunt to where the belt's at. <laughs> you know, like, I, I was working on our intro for tonight's show, and I was thinking, well, since we already have a 2020 champion, we should just take that part out of Jose's intro. But then it's like... You got nothing. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll we'll ride with that for a while, but I don't know. If it gets to be 2023 and you're still the 2019 Pop <laughs> Fantasy Football Champion, we might have to have a discussion. No, because I'm going to take it back next year. All right. That's how I roll. Let's I, go. I win it. I lose it. I win it back. Yep. Now I lost it. So next year I'm going to win it back. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> with all of Mahoney's picks he would have took. <laughs> all right. That's not how this works. I pick right in front of you. So last week we crowned our new Pop Fantasy Football champion in Mel and anointed the Juan in Juan as our new last place trophy. But after uh, a season and a year like we just had, everyone who participated deserves some sort of recognition. So we're doing these awards, uh, you know, a little for us and, and for you guys because uh, – a really banner season for pop fantasy football. You agree? I, bet I you agree. I bet one, you of most season. The, one of the most exciting seasons yet. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, Tito has our first award. And, and apropos, we're starting out with the best draft of the year. No, no, no. No, no, no. There were quite a few drafts that were really well put together. I mean, you go into it drafting uh, the players you want, not knowing injury and things like that. But Kelly had a good draft with Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, Adam Thielen, going, and Tyler Lockett going one, two, three, and four. But the person with the best draft and who hardly messed with her team would be Mary and the Batu Bright Sons. All right. Hit them applause. I actually don't have an applause sounder. I bet I could find one. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> that ESPN, the global leader oh, of sports. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Wait, I do have Hit Clappy. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Get it out of your system. Like at the beginning of a presidential debate. Uh, yeah. So Mary, yeah, Mary started with her number one pick being Michael Thomas. She didn't get saddled with him because she swiftly moved them off to Mahoney. I think after week one or something. Yeah. What a depressing situation that was. Uh, and then you go down the line. She fifth. She drafted Deshaun Watson, who had a tremendous season. Yeah. Despite mm -hmm. Houston, his team doing shitty. Who the rumors is is he just he's asking for a trade. He's not happy with the coach they hired. Yeah, I just saw um, that. And then you go all the way down to round thirteen, where she drafts Justin Jefferson, who was the breakout rookie this season in yeah. Minnesota. Who who might end up showing up again in our awards tonight. <laughs> Spoiler and, alert. And, Speaking of who might show up again on the awards, are her kicker. What, what what's his name again, guys? Before I butcher it again, Young Hui, <laughs> Young Hui Q, who was the second or third highest uh, point scorer in the league this year. That's fucking wild. wild. <laughs> yeah, and he ended on Atlanta. Yeah, 
Like he was the bright spot of Atlanta's season, except yeah. for that one he missed. The bottom third of Mary's draft is untouchable. Well, and we didn't even talk Joel about Ethan, fucking Will Lutz, Justin Jefferson, even Naheem Hines had a pretty decent season for her. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like, she had Koo, but she also had Will Lutz, who didn't have right. a slouch of a season. Yep. Colts D. Yeah, uh, yeah, the number one ranked defense, and we didn't even mention Nick Chubb, who uh, really did some work for. Her. Yeah. And yeah, what a and what a fun drafted... name. Who who'd she draft? Well, I was saying she drafted J.K. Dobbins, who towards the end of the season came, came on. on. Yeah, so like even. Even though she let him go, the draft was there. She had the foresight to at least grab him. Yeah. But Baltimore started real slow. They didn't really yeah, start did. like none of their players were putting up numbers except for Andrews. Well, no, no, because no, not Andrews even work in the beginning. Yeah, because you you also got to remember, um, uh, what's his face? Their QB didn't have the best uh, start to his season either. Like yeah, he, Lamar he, was he, Lamar. Lamar was compared to last season was was off. Yeah, let's get that Jose curse. Uh, Let's move on. (laughs) Uh, So we kind of started out uh, the year strong with this uh, cool little segment that Jose had uh, devised. And it kind of fell off, but I think we need to bring it back for the awards. So up next, with the stud of the year, we got Jose. I'm a stud. The winner of this is a man who was drafted. Dropped, picked back up, dropped, <laughs> picked back up, and stayed. And he took a team on his shoulders and said, you know what? I don't care if I got picked back up. We're going to the Super Bowl. And they went to the Super Bowl, and he fucking showed up in the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. It's did. called the Pop Fantasy Football Championship, Jose. We don't want to get <laughs> sued by the sued. NFL. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just busting your balls. Come try. <laughs> NFL. <laughs> they so the take winner. all of your, your belts. Yeah. Now, I voted for Patrick Mahomes just to stick it to Juan, but uh, everybody else <laughs> unanimous, unanimously picked this guy as stud of the year. Mel's Aaron Rodgers. a a <laughs> It's yeah. fucking stud of the year. Let- Remember during the draft when Tito was like, that guy sucks, he's washed up. No, that was you. Who also said it week four, and then after he <laughs> throws four touchdowns, he's like, yeah, well, he's not going to keep doing that. Let's and take then a- he throws more touchdowns, and Mahoney's like, well, yeah, but he's not going to keep doing that. You're welcome, Mel. Fucking Aaron Rodgers had one game in single digits, and that was against Brady and the Bucks. And then he oh, had yeah, that one game. We just got fucking. He slapped. had only one other game under twenty points, and that was nineteen points against Carolina. I bet I was real annoying week six when he had that one game coming off the bye. I bet I said some awful things yeah. on that week's podcast. <laughs> that was that you was the one time where he's like. Hey? I told you, it's I over. I bet I did. He's done. Retire him. Drop him. <laughs> Look at that score. Look, he plays a real team. He falls to shit. I told you all season. Yeah. Then oh, he yeah, scored, was... what, 27 points a week every week after that? Well, I think he was listening. I think so. so I think Mel... so. I take personal responsibility for Aaron Rodgers' season. Mel drafted him in the 12th round, 137th overall. Jeez. Dropped him. Before week one, and picked them up. Yeah, right he didn't after. even make it to week one on a team. He was drafted, but like dropped. I wonder if Mahoney. I wonder if Mahoney spooked him. I I think I might have. Mahoney spooked, spooked him. him. Mahoney back with him. Mahoney spooked him. Mel dropped him, and then what? He went for thirty <laughs> against New Orleans, and he was like, "Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> He so he uh, rushed in three touchdowns. He threw for forty eight and threw for four thousand two hundred ninety nine yards on the season. Only five interceptions with those forty eight. Wow, two fumbles. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's wild. Wild. So what's the what's I mean, the two different? Smile. 
Oh, he had 149 carrying yards. Holy shit, Aaron Rodgers. Look at you, man. How he, old is this he guy? Can he can move. Right. Um, old enough for them to draft a quarterback and piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. They drafted the quarterback <laughs> last draft, and it pissed him off. Yeah. And he's like, uh, excuse me, a touchdown, a touchdown. Well, what was that, Mahoney? A touchdown. A touchdown. <laughs> well, I mean, good, great for Mel for not only winning the championship, but winning the championship with the fucking stud of the year. So good for him. Mm -hmm. All right, Jose, let's keep it going with the dud of the year. You got the and dud! Flip that coin. Let's see the other side of this mother. This award goes to a player who could have been the number one scoring player in fantasy football. <laughs> He started the year off so strong. I believe he put up like 30 points. He may have even played a second game, or did he go out that first game? Um, no, he, he played the first two weeks, went out, and then came back for week nine, and that was and it. And the sad thing is, he put up so many points in the two first games he played, he was still running back one or two until week five or six. Yeah, the award goes to the infamous, uh, always doubtful, <laughs> maybe come back next week, Christian McCaffrey. IR, <laughs> IR for a good portion of the season. Man, it, it oh, when I name. when I IR Caffrey when I opened this up, I was like, huh, I wonder how many weeks I actually got out of McCaffrey, and I'm like, yep, oh. exactly three weeks. <sighs> He averaged 25.8 points, though. <laughs> well, they're still talking. When he, like he's still number one pick next year. Yeah, when he played, he was a beast. He sure did. My number, The overall number one pick in the Pop Fantasy Football Draft is our dud of the year. That is real sad. Yeah. Well, so, so quick That's question. two years Let in a row, right? The number one pick got hurt? Mm, yep. Barkley it was the last, last year. Barkley. Saquon. Oh, maybe even three years because my number one pick was David Johnson the year he broke his fucking wrist. Oh, my God. Ah, there you go, Juan. Have fun with that. No, Oof. McCaffrey's going third because Juan's going to pick Mahomes and then mm. Goat's going to pick Derrick Henry. And then mm. who drafts third? Um, That would Me? be... No. Not... Kelly? Yes. Kelly, I think. I think it's Kelly. Yeah. Uh, oh, so cool. then Kelly well, then wind up eventually with Eventually, he'll trade him to Mahoney. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like next season already. <laughs> speaking. Oh, no. Mahoney's next. I was about to jump to the Speaking of. Well, speaking of Mahoney, Mahoney <laughs> has our next award with the Sleeper of the Year. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sleeper of the year is an easy award. I would not be surprised. I haven't looked, but I would not be surprised at all to see if this was a unanimous choice. Uh, there was no better sleeper than this guy. He showed up in our lives in the draft, dressed fancy as shit, <laughs> and then showed up in the lineup every week. Like, I'm not sure this guy disappointed once all season, but Justin Jefferson on Mary's Batu Bright Sons absolutely the sleeper of the year yeah i got his mm -hmm. stats sitting right in front of me uh slow start three points 5.5 .5 points but you also have to consider there was no preseason so yep. you know they're getting their reps in getting some touches but yeah uh a few weeks under 10 points but uh real reliable and and yeah. just yeah. his first touchdown was like a 73 yard touchdown so that kind of set the tone for the he season he averaged 13.9 points a game. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't bad for a rookie wide receiver that you right. were not expecting to yep. do anything and you just picked him up late and was like, eh, he might. Because usually those last picks are kind of maybes. Like, mm -hmm. those are the first ones you drop if you're going to pick up somebody on the waiver wire. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, it, it goes to show that if you're planning out your draft for next year, be sure to scope out some rookies because. It's all a roll of the dice. None of us are going to have the same team that we draft with at the end. But who knows? You might you might strike gold with a Justin Jefferson. 
So and also it sometimes you got to hold on to those rookies. Mm -hmm. Like if she were to drop them after week, if after those first two outings, those first two weeks, she dropped them. And he got picked up by somebody else. That changes the face of the league. That changes where whatever team picked him up could have ended up. Yeah. Was, so sometimes you got you got to hold those rookies. <laughs> was Marvin Jones Jr. a rookie this year? No. Okay. No. I was gonna say no, like I I feel like I did that with Marvin Jones Jr. where I dropped him. He was cold at the beginning of the season, but then he started blowing up towards the end. But not a rookie, so it doesn't apply. Uh, I think you guys all picked Justin Jefferson, and I think just for the sentimental pick, I picked Gronk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like Aaron Rodgers, everybody thought Gronk was done, right? That's fair. And, very and, fair. and he came on late as well. His, his, yeah. Again, no preseason, as you pointed out. He, he came on, I think, after like week five or so. All right. Now, Tito. Now, speaking of Mahoney, <laughs> Tito's got the trade of the year. Dun, dun, dun. All right. dun, dun, dun. So, when you think trades and you think our league, probably the name that everybody gets in their head is is one Mr. Mahoney. Mm -hmm. uh, the the wheel of dealer over here uh, is one uh, to trade to offer trades rel relentlessly. I think he offered trades even before the first week. Of the season, correct? I'm ready I'm anytime. I'll make a trade for next yeah. season right now. <laughs> He's already trading trade draft picks. He's already yeah. ready. You should They're try and get message Kelly. Yeah, you should said, try. Hey, you're going to take McCaffrey third, right? Try and get I'm that number at... one draft pick away from Juan Mahoney. <clears throat> Juan, so I'm look at the uh, I'm looking at the trade counter here, and Mahoney had nine trades. That seems so low. <laughs> that does seem low, but that nine thousand transactions. Oh yeah, his transactions are ridiculous. Acquisition seventy eight, drop seventy six. Act uh, his IR moves, his IR moves twenty three. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, Sometimes yeah, that, I would pick up people just to put on IR. Like they'd the, be on IR, I'd pick them up, put them on my IR, and then pick up somebody else. The person with the second most IR moves was Shark with ten. <laughs> you know, if right. we we didn't vote on it for new rules, but if we could keep that IR around, that would be nice. I'll At least maybe right. one spot. Yeah. Yeah. The I, two, if it's still COVID season, but at least one At spot least one. So if you have someone go out real early, you can sit on them and not have to drop them and be afraid that someone else is going to pick them up and they're going to blow up for you. All right. I'll put that out there. I'm sure everybody would agree with that. So trade of the year, obviously one of Mahoney's trades, who he sent, James Robinson, Jacksonville running back. Drew Brees, quarterback from the Saints, and the Washington defense to Matt for wide receiver Mike Evans, wide receiver Ke Keelan Cole, and the Tampa Bay defense. That's probably one trade Mahoney would like to have back. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, uh, I would undo that one uh, every time. <laughs> Specifically because of James Robinson? Yeah. yeah, I thought he was, I thought it wasn't going to last. I thought he was playing above his, his, you know, watermark, and I was like, all right, I got to move this guy before he falls apart. I thought the same thing with the Washington defense. I thought I had played through the portion of their schedule where they were going to be relevant. Uh, I had my eye on that Tampa Bay defense because yeah, I knew who they wanted them. And then Mike Evans, I had bad. I had a bad taste on Mike Evans from last season. So I was like, all right, well, you know, I want Tampa Bay. Mike Evans is somebody I can probably move somewhere else. And Keelan Cole had put up some decent numbers leading up to that trade. So I was like, all right, I'm going to dump James Robinson on Matt. I'm going to dump the Washington defense on Matt. I'll get Tampa. I'll try to move Mike Evans somewhere else. And Nyes, like, immediately was like, I want Mike <laughs> Evans. And was like, Great. <laughs> Let's go. Uh and then I didn't have a need for Drew Brees. So I, I I was like, this is gonna be great. I'm getting Tampa Bay and I've I've got other pieces I can move and you know, uh, I, all I had to give up is three people I don't you know, two people I don't have a lot of faith in and one guy I don't need anymore. And then James Robinson just kept putting up numbers, the Washington defense kept putting up numbers, Tampa Bay never came through for me, and I was like, Yeah, no, that was that was a terrible trade on my <laughs> part. And then Mike you traded Mike Evans, who wound up I think the first player in history to have his first, his first eight seasons in the league, all over a thousand yards receiving. 
Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he, he really – I Mike Evans, to me, was an injury risk. I didn't think he was going to be consistent. I was hoping to move him immediately. Nice, I who did I trade him to you for? I think it was Christian Kirk, who had put up, like, four weeks in a row yeah. above, like, 13 points. Yeah, and I was like, oh, right. yeah, I'm getting in on the ground floor of Christian Kirk. This is going to be great. And then I think he scored me a total of like twelve points over three weeks. So, well, didn't work out. Congrats to Matt for winning trade of the year on this one. Uh, but Mahoney and he ended up getting Tampa Bay's D back later. After <laughs> Mahoney was like, "Fuck these guys," and dropped them, he's like, "Yeah, all right, I guess I'll take them back." <laughs> but who knows? Maybe, maybe uh, Mahoney will be on the better end of another trade that we talk about tonight. Or how about? Uh, uh, right yeah, now. when he gets McCaffrey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to go to Jose with the worst trade of the year. No, no, no. No, no, no. This one, as well, goes to the trade master, Mr. Mahoney. Well, I mean, the, this the, time, the, the award doesn't go to Mahoney, but he is definitely involved. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't win this worst trade. This was by far not my worst trade. This trade was wonderful for me. Yeah, this this needs to be called the I put a bag over your head and said, give me all your players <laughs> award. <laughs> this so, is uh, after you're done having sex and you're doing some pillow talk trades. That's what this yeah. is. Yeah, I just made you come six times. Hey, how about you give me that uh, stud running back you got? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Mahoney made Kelly's dick explode and then somebody else's <laughs> dick exploded. <laughs> So Mahoney used Dalvin Cook's dick exploding <laughs> to prey on poor Kelly to just snag him from him. Hey, man. He traded. Kelly drafted Dalvin Cook, traded him to Mahoney. First round pick. First round pick. Uh, who was what? Second in touchdowns on the year as a running back? I think Derrick Henry believe. took first. I do believe. Yes. But at, at, at one point before Derrick Henry really started fucking people over, I think Dalvin Cook had the record at one point. He, hold on. He, he, averaged, he averaged 21.8 points a game. That's yeah. ridiculous. With He's a wonderful. blown dick. <laughs> Mahoney yeah, what did he, miss? Like, he only missed two weeks. No, he missed yeah. one because one was a bye. Oh, one was the bye <laughs> even. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like he was out for three weeks and, and – and he just immediately just kept blowing up. And you so, have to uh, assume Mahoney, after oh, hold on after his dick exploded, he missed Atlanta, he missed out on Dubai, and then comes back and scores forty seven points. Forty seven mm-hmm. points. Let me tell you, I was feeling brilliant that week because <laughs> <laughs> Mahoney- I got him Mahoney- for week six, so I held on to him for those two weeks. Couldn't play him. First week I could play him, he scores forty seven points, and I was like, I am a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, my season's going to change right now. Yeah. Here comes that winning streak. Well, I mean, it kind of did. It did change. Yeah. Dalvin Cook was the difference maker for Mahoney. Yeah. Well, it was later, but I don't think it, it happened right away. Well, he was he, he was he, Owen. Well, I went Owen six, and then I went, uh, what, four and two the rest of the way or whatever. So, Or no, seven and two, something like that. I don't know. So- so did uh, Jose? Did you say who he gave up for uh, Dalvin? Cook? No. So Mahoney traded tight end Jimmy Graham, New England running back Damian Harris, LA Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup. So Damian Which Harris is- had been on IR all season. He came back, put up ten points in his first week back, looked sharp, and I was like, "He's got to go, got to trade him." Got to get him out of here before something bad happens. <laughs> because that Patriots team was a disaster. It was like, yeah, no shit. He's, he's back. He put up points. I got to move him. And then uh, Jimmy Graham had been putting up points, but I had somebody else. I had uh, what's his face uh, from Tennessee? John U. John U. Smith. John U. Smith, who was doing great for those first couple of weeks. So I was like, I don't need Jimmy Graham. Um, and then. I who's the other guy? Cooper Cup. The other guy was oh Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup was another one. I had too many wide receivers, and I was like, all right. So then, and then Kelly had both of his running backs were injured. Uh, his tight end was injured, 
and he didn't have enough r- wide receivers. So I was like, I can fill all three of those holes if you just give me that one running back who can't even play. Can't even play this oh, week. He, he filled all of his holes because he ended yep. up getting his other running back later. <laughs> yeah, no, I got Aaron Jones first. Oh, okay, okay. And this, I think, was the start of Kelly collecting every New England running back. <laughs> it was also the start of Kelly's complete decline. Once he <laughs> traded those two away, his team never saw another win. I think he might have won one after that. Yeah, he won one after that. He started yeah. out 4-0 and and then went 1-9 and the rest of the way. Yeah, that's rough. All right, now but that- hey, Kelly. You at least got this award. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Congratulations, <laughs> Kelly. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Fucking love you. Well, uh, since we're done talking about head-to-head trades, uh, let's send it over to Tito, who has the award for Best Rivalry of the Year. Dun, 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 dun. Now, what when you think rivalry, what makes a good rivalry? It's guys who will, the wins go back and forth. There's usually a lot of uh, trash talk, which I can love and appreciate. Gamesmanship, so, yeah. Gamesmanship. So when you put all those things in consideration, there's only one rivalry that kind of stands out above all others. And that's, of course, our Jose and Mahoney, who are Robert in the same division, that. who battled each other last year for the championship, who even this year, when Mahoney thought he was done playing and he sees that he's playing Jose in a meaningless game, they start making waiver moves to counter uh, Yeah, there is no, no meaningless game. If we're there's playing no Jose. meaningless game when I'm playing Jose. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't I, care what anyone has going on, what place I'm playing for, it's on. Yeah, I can't tell you how often I, like, I'll just be doing the dishes and I'm like, I can't believe he beat me two out of three two years in a row. Uh, it and uh, I just love that each year has gone to the third game. Yeah, there has been a sweep. You win one, I win one, I win one, you win one, and it just goes the, like that little back and forth. You know, we're going back and forth into Discord on rule changes, and one of the ones is shuffling up the divisions, and I'm all for shuffling up the divisions. Except for that one little voice in the back of my head that's like, but you might not play Jose that many times. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we, ooh. No, because fate will put us back into a division I together. Think so. I think so. Real fate crime. All right, well, this. We're definitely playing in the playoffs again. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you there. Uh, this next award, uh, Mahoney and I actually put our heads together to come up with this one. Uh, so it's, it's very apropos. So Mahoney has the next award for co-GMs of the year. All right, now this one was tough. Nice and I did not agree at first on which co-GMs should be the winner because I was kind of like, you know, Juan and his cousin, even though they came in last. Nephew. It's his nephew. (laughs) Oh, nephew. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, is it like, is this like a, a Chinatown situation though? Like, you know, who knows? So... Uh, Juan and his nephew, I was like, they maybe came in last, but like up until whatever week of the season, week four or whatever, that the nephew like lost interest and stopped helping, like they were doing pretty well. Things were working out. And then I, you know, you start to think about the other co GMs in our league, Goat and Lee, and like it's not like they lit the world on fire. They came in second to last. But, you know. You can't come in last and win co-GM of the year. <laughs> you can't be the one and also be the co-GMs of the year. So, our 2020 co-GMs of the year, of course, go to Lee. And Lee, uh, we had hoped Lee would be here to accept the award on behalf of him and Goat, the co-GMs of the Turd Fergusons. But uh, we invited him on the show and he said, you know what? Uh, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go he my was like, I'd cat. love to, but I'm going to do literally anything else. He says, you know what? You know what I would rather do than come on your pop fantasy football awards? I would rather give my cat another sex change. So, <laughs> I believe that's what he's doing. He's he's gluing, he's taking his uh, model kit and gluing on a new dick on his cat. <laughs> he's going to send out uh, uh, little gift cards that say it, it's a boy again. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> If you're one of the listeners who doesn't listen to the podcast, which you can find on this same 
uh, on our same YouTube channel, or you can find on under Panels on Pages podcast on your your uh, app of choice. Uh, you've got to go listen to last this week's episode, the same week, and hear what the hell happened to Lee's cat because it's <laughs> nonsense that you. I don't know what you think will have happened to Lee's cat. I guarantee that's not what happened to Lee's cat. It's like, true. Nonsense. Yeah, Lee has Unlike abandoned. Lee has abandoned cats for less. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ridiculous. that's a whole other show, so definitely check that oh, out. Oh, it is. It sure is. The dick is less. <laughs> All right, next up, Tito. Uh, we're we're getting towards the end. We're getting uh, towards the back half of the awards. So next up, Tito has the award for best team name. Na 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 na. That it cackles you every time. <laughs> Is this me or Jose? I'll take it if Jose won't take it. Uh, uh oh yeah, it's Jose. My bad, my bad, my bad. Jose, do it. <laughs> the best team name. Now, this team name was more than a team name. Because as we noticed from last year, last year may have been the start of the trend of changing team names kind of changed the fate and outlook of that team's season. And this was the start of a run that drove the team to third, but had a chance at the title. After this team name was changed to Do It Tito Beat Me, Jason Nyes went on an historic <laughs> name run <laughs> and just stopped. And Tito was a powerhouse when they were playing. That's right. like, Tito was putting up averaging 170 points a game just fucking mm -hmm. fucking shit up yeah and then nice came in and said no tito i would do it <laughs> it still hurts it still well, hurts brother. for for those that don't remember so obviously i would have been very disappointed if i didn't come away with best team name this year since i was the kerouac and mahoney was changing my team name every week but when mahoney realized the math to get him into the playoffs he needed me to lose to Tito. And he decided to change my team name to Do It Tito, beat me, and I whooped up on Tito that week. <laughs> you were so mad. Well, yes, I, I was also like, very I want mad. You to lose. You were offended. Yeah. You were well, hurt. Because he also put the curse on the house. Yeah. Yeah, because you wanted he, my he wife to lose, to, too. You wished the whole household of Nyes ill will. Yeah. It's true. There might be... He took it personal, and he took it out on Tito. <laughs> and, yeah. But, like, I, it wasn't, I wasn't taking it out on Tito. Like, it's not like I made any moves. It's just, boy, I had a rabbit's foot yeah. up my ass that week. And then... Tito's getting pounded, and he's like, Martha! Martha! <laughs> a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> and then I I never fucking looked back after that. Well, I mean, I looked. Back and not that. only that week, but he 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 beat Tito. I mean, you, you don't, play him twice. You don't gotta rub it in, Jose. <laughs> no, but I'm just I'm just saying. Right? Like says the man who just took an award for it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I I did take the win over Tito in the first week of the playoffs, but that yeah. that meant well no. No, no, it was, it was in something. It was it was in the second week of the playoffs. Yes. Yes, I lost in the first week of the playoffs. It, it was As it was I. a meaningless game. But yeah, maybe next oh. year, maybe next year, me and Tito will be in the running for best rivalry, or maybe next year, maybe. me and Mahoney Tito's will be in the have running. To step it up. Me and Mahoney are going to be in the running for best rivalry. Uh oh. If he we'll puts a pox on my all wind up in. If he fucking puts a pox on my house again. <laughs> Sometimes I need you to lose. It's just how it is. All right. Uh, next up, do it, Tito. Tell us what the worst team name was <laughs> of 2020. <laughs> All right, so like Jose mentioned, you know, people started to change. There's few of us who kind of keep the same names consistently. Mary's one. I'm another. And if it wasn't for his Kerouac uh, punishment, uh, Nyes would be probably another one. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But there are some of us who kind of change our names, change the team names week to week. And the worst names for this season all belong to one Thatcher Cleveland. 
He had he started out with QAnon's guide to idiocy. Idiocy. Mm-hmm. Which Mara losers concession ears. Yeah, the Mara losers concession ears. I think is is my least that's, favorite of all of them. Yeah, yeah I, that's where you I, are. I, I, I was the first okay one was all right. One. Yeah, I was. You should have okay stayed that. I didn't like. I'm not even sure what Mara losers concession ears. Like, I get what it is, but what is it a play on? Like, what is it supposed to be? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, so when he his last name, we're going down swinging. Sure was. I, I thought mm. at, when he first changed that, I thought it was in reference to his team. But that was another. If you see his theme here, was another political thing. I believe Trump or somebody said that uh, in one of their rallies. Oh, that if okay. they go down, they're going down swinging. I just so he was a big Fallout Boy fan. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, so I give him I give him some credit for sticking with the theme that he had going. But after the first one it wasn't. Yeah, uh I really well, he was about as successful as Trump going down swinging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh Tad just kept on losing each time he changed his name, just like every time Trump tried to uh steal Sue the vote. State. Yep. Yep. I really didn't like QAnon's guide to idiocy because I always confused it with Vetter's COVID quarantine because of that Q in there. But then he changed it to Mara Loser's Concessioneers. I'm like, wow, that is a real bad team name. <laughs> you know, Vetter had some bad team names too. Like, it's true. The second place worst team name would definitely go to Vetter. My favorite of Vetter's team names being boring old quarantine where he spelled quarantine wrong. <laughs> His own name that he invented spelled it wrong. He has since fixed it, I believe, if if I'm yes. not mistaken. Yeah, with T E E M. Yeah, exactly. You fixed it too late. We seen it. Yeah. Well, it was it's wrong for weeks. Well, it's, if you look at Vetter's name, his first quarantine is Q U A R A N, and boring old quarantine is Q U A R E N. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Just a little copy paste, boy. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh vetter's other team names uh later on if i'm not mistaken but uh up next mahoney has a new award that we've never sh had before mahoney you want to introduce this award real quick yes this award is a special award it's the first annual version of this award and this award is meant to uh this award is given to the player who is just putting in the work. They're coming every week. They're constantly looking at waivers. They're wondering why they're not picking higher in waivers. They are <laughs> picking up players. They're trying. They're moving their rosters around. They're changing team names. They're doing anything it takes to win, and they're still finishing middle of the pack. So the first annual Mitchell Trubisky You Tried Award goes to Jeremiah Vetter. And his COVID quarantine, do it nice, beat me, and boring old quarantine. Yeah, we didn't talk about when uh, I won. Uh, oh, well, me and Mahoney share the award for uh, do it Tito beat me for best team name of the year. But after I whooped up on Tito with do it Tito beat me, Vetter changed his team name because he was going up against me the next week to do it nice, beat me. And boy, oh boy, did I. <laughs> yeah. said, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he's like do you mean this this always doesn't work it doesn't work this way <laughs> and then it was was it that very next week where tad changed his team name and it's like do you guys never learn <laughs> <laughs> oh so yeah i mean vetter was there he was participating he was making moves he just never could seem to get himself out of uh of the middle there. You know, he, he was close to the lead in his division for a while, but that division was a bit of a mess. Yeah, it sure was. Um, you know. He had the opportunity to get the wild card spot. He had the opportunity to get first place in the division as well. Yeah, I mean, didn't we all have the opportunity to get the wild well, card as, spot? Well, as far as that, that last week. Even Tito at some points was maybe in the running for the <laughs> wild card spot. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting towards the end. Uh, talking about uh, the You Tried Award. Next up, Jose's got the bad beat of the year. Fuck you! 
this bad beat takes us into the first round of the playoffs where it was wild. Kelly had no reasonable reason to win this game. Mm -mm. There was no way this game should have been won by Kelly. And not only did he win it, but the, the, the win mark, the amount of points he won it by was amazing. This award goes to the playoff round one versus uh, Juan versus Kelly. This was probably the flip side of karma of Kelly's season kind of going to shit. But he was playing. Kelly was do uh, all done. He had his points up there. There was nothing he can do. <laughs> was it the Monday night game was left? Yep. Um, well, they were tied as of the Monday night game oh, being left, remember. Tied as the Monday night game. Yeah, well, Sunday won. ended tied at 107 points. I'll never forget. All Juan needed was any one of them to catch one pass. That's it. Catch one That's pass. That's it. Tyler Boyd, right there. or have ten yards of com of total offense that game. Yep. Yeah, we he, he, he had Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd on Cincinnati, and Eric Ebron who, who's on been Pittsburgh killing it all year. Tyler Boyd not getting you a point, like that's unheard of with the season he had. Even his worst game, he got you one point, and then Eric Ebron. Who's kind of had a, a back and forth season, but he was at least good for one catch. And then who was it? Tyler Boyd first. The concussion. Who went out, got clocked, knocked to yep. his ass. And then it's like, okay, well, he's not getting no more points, but he's got one more guy who's going to get at least uh, one catch. And then his knee explodes. <laughs> he got crushed by those three people. And I think there was a lightning and God in the background. If you freeze framed the injury, <laughs> and he is just having himself a laugh. Yeah. yeah. So the game finishes tied, one hundred seven each. So it goes to tiebreakers, and what's the first tiebreaker? Win margin. So Kelly has is five and nine. Juan is four and ten. So that one win that Kelly finished. His, in his last 10 games, that one win he got from, made him beat. Well, Most important win of his season. Sending Juan to the Kerouac and eventually turning it straight up into the Juan. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. If that would have went any other way, it would have been called the Kelly. Oh, it might have been. Oh, man. I don't know. I think if Kelly would have won the Kerouac, I think he might have quit altogether. I think he still would have called it the Juan. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Juan Kelly quit, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to Juan for the bad beat of the year. Uh, that's not it, though. That's not the last of it, though. Tito, ha we, we, Jose coined a phrase this year, which I love. And because fantasy football, there's skill involved, but also it's... It's all... No one fucking knows. And nobody knows. Not even the professionals know what they're doing. So coming up next, Jose has the award for Fate Crime of the Year. No, no, no. No, no, no. Explain what a fate crime is, Jose, to the folks at home. A fate crime is when you have no control over this action. It was written in the stars that this is the way this outcome was going to be. Whether or not you knew it or not. It's also almost fantasy football karma in a way. Because some of these fake crimes are set up by actions or shit talking gone wrong. Uh, example, when Mahoney needed the Nises to lose. <laughs> yeah. It was a automatic fake crime that that had sent Nyes into a winning streak that toppled over the league. So this year, it, I mean, it's obvious. This man's team was tearing it up all season long. Just his quarterback-wide receiver combo of uh, Kyler Murray and Devontae Adams 
scorched the scene. <laughs> Just tore the league apart in points. And pretty much the only reason why he won the majority of his games because the rest of the team, like those two players bailed him out of numerous games that should have went the other way. And they just had a goddamn day. So he finally gets to watch his team play and they do what they do. Kyler Murray puts up a shitload of points. Devontae Adams puts up a shitload of points. So many points and so much of a high that he took to social media <laughs> to let everyone know. My quarterback is going to do it, y'all. And after this tweet, Kyler Murray's dick exploded. <laughs> he got to watch the only win. And not only that, not only that. Was it the only he, Arizona win? Did they lose after that? Well, no, Arizona still put up a couple wins. Okay, okay. It's okay. just Kyler Murray, in, he ended up hurting his shoulder and was right. never the same after that. And then he had a little small injury that kind of hampered him. But he was definitely not slinging the ball the way he was before that shoulder injury. The winner of Fake Crime of the Year goes to Tad and his glorious tweet. Which that not all, we whoop. have ready to go right here. Uh, okay. Tito, you want to you wanna read this for us? So Tad, November 15th, tweeted... I've got Kyler Murray in my fantasy football league and finally get to getting to see him play like the beast has me like. And it's the Bob's Burgers meme of the fire in the background. and Louise Kyler with her hoodie Kyler on. Yep. With her hoodie on, yeah. And it was all downhill from there. And, like, we don't hear from Tad about fantasy football a lot. He does not tweet about fantasy football a lot. And then he tweeted this. <laughs> One tweet. <laughs> like the big, and it's like, like, after that tweet, he played himself out of the playoffs. Yep. Yeah. He, uh, he might have been in first place in the division at that time. He was certainly yeah. going down swinging. Oof. Went down on fire. <laughs> so the problem was, is he set this ablaze, but he forgot to get out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> what oh. just fucking oh. down burning. Uh, unrelated veteran in the chat uh, mentions we we forgot to mention that when Vetter changed his team name to the same name as mine unsuccessfully to try and trick ESPN into uh. giving him the win. <laughs> what was it? It was implicated in a WAP scandal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed that one. That was a good week. All right. Well, we're coming up on our final award of the night. And, Tito, I know you were supposed to announce that last one, and I realized it halfway through Jose's description of fake crime. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, but I'm going to make it up to you with this next award. Uh, this was another thing that uh, Mahoney and I uh, discussed in secret last Dun -dun -dun. night. Dun -dun -dun. So for the final award of the night, we're going to go with the 2020 Pop Fantasy Football Hall of Fame inductee. This man has been at it from the very beginning, the inception of pop fantasy football. He's he's a stalwart, a former champion, uh, always in there, always helping people out, always in the mix. So uh, we're going to give the first ever pop fantasy football Hall of Fame induction to none other than our commissioner, Tito of the Brooklyn Dark Knights. Congratulations, Tito. Yeah! Speech! Uh, thank you, guys. This is uh, unexpected. I should have expected something when I saw all the black on <laughs> 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 Fucking redacted. <laughs> redacted. <laughs> but no, thank you, guys. This is awesome. Uh, again, we started this. I just wanted to... This is something I enjoyed doing for a very long time, and I wanted to bring it to the population. Also, understanding that not everybody at the time was an avid football watcher sure um i try to make Which it makes fun this year so nuts that this isn't football people but it was an amazing football like uh, uh, um uh, i mean we were we were all balls deep in it like mahoney doesn't watch it competitiveness but, that's yeah. what i was looking for. yeah 
So, I mean, when I, when I first started the league, I kind of wanted to make it accessible and as easy for everybody to get involved and to be and stay interested in. For sure. A lot of times you get into these things and week one, week two, week three, you're into it. And then by week six, seven and eight, you're not even participating. But to to the league's credit, to everybody's credit, everybody participates, everybody stays involved to the end. So I, I thank all you guys for for making this league what it is. Well, we love you and appreciate you and you do all the fucking grunt work behind the scenes that uh none of us have to deal with so we appreciate it and yeah mahoney go run the knicks <laughs> <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time I mean, he'd do please. a better job yeah yeah no i'll shit. run the knicks well the knicks are winning right now so yeah because well, i've been making some calls games? Hey man, two two games is a hot start for the Knicks. Give them a break. Yeah, no shit. All right, well that's our awards, everybody. So let's head into the two minute warning. Two minute warning. And uh, usually we do our final thoughts right about now, but we did our final thoughts for 2020 last week. So this week, uh, speaking of our Hall of Fame inductee, Commissioner Tito, uh, Tito is going to discuss some league changes for 2021. Uh, we've been doing some votes in the Discord. So so what do we got, Tito? What are we looking at? Right, so join the Discord so you can kind of see and keep track of what we're going, what's going on there. I put up a topic and leave it up to the league to vote. Again, is this is our league. I'm not just going to institute rules without anybody say so, except if you ask for two quarterbacks to start, then you're out of the league. <laughs> that is a that is a rule of mine. Anyway, so we the, the tight end spot was up for debate. I put that out to everybody to see if it stays or goes. We're keeping our tight end. So as a consequence to that, we're not adding a flex. So no additional flex, tight end stays. So right now we're a status quo. Uh, the other addition that some people wanted was an individual defensive player, which means you have to draft defensive players. They get points and so on and so forth. That got shot down. Only one person really wanted that. I mean, it um, might be cool, but that's a lot of extra work. It, and it is. Like, too it much, is. Too much. It, 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 it's a lot of extra work. Like, and you got to pick have... one defensive player out of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is, is like that's usually you see that in leagues where like everybody's sports mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah like or, this is kind of casual sports or like it's a it's a bigger league like a 15 16 person league something like that maybe right right, right. So yeah where you need to create points thin, somewhere yeah. else so the rosters get thinned out and then you start doing it there or if you have like a dynasty league or things like that or guys who are just honestly when you get into defensive players football knowledge does come more into play yeah because you have to pay attention to guys' tackles, interceptions. Then you yeah. have a lot of stat corrections. You have a ton of stat corrections. Oh. Because you give a guy a sack on Sunday, and then they say, oh, no, wait a minute. The other guy was in there with him, so now it's a half sack. So now you mm -hmm. lose points. Or it's a half tackle or a full tackle. You know, there's always – if you look at stat corrections, it's like about 95% defensive players. And that Too could much. be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Sounds awful. Maybe something to re revisit in the future, but I, th I think we got a good thing going right now. Right. Um, I'll let you guys know right now, we will be moving the trade deadline two weeks. Nice! I like that. To in between week 11 and week 12, where it was currently in between week 9 and 10. Fuck yeah. So that will be done. Also up is we're going to be reshuffling divisions. Nice. Maybe so like a, every I, two years we do that. So I'm going to go with Nice's suggestion. I'll put it up to the league, but I, I think, think I'm going to go with Nice's suggestion. I think this might have been Shark's idea, but I, I really liked it. So I wanted to make sure uh, so I brought the, it back up. Division, the division winners will draft their divisions. <laughs> I love it. It's fucking sick. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That. That's pretty cool. Listen, if you draft me in your division and you don't draft Jose, we're going to have a problem. Right, exactly. So, <laughs> da, 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 da. so let's review who the division winners are. Shark, Nyes, and myself. We're going to end up with the same division. <laughs> <laughs> and if we so draft... When, when does this happen? Well, we're going to do it. We'll arrange it and we'll do it on the Discord so everybody can see. Yeah, we can do it b saying, before the draft. Same energy I come after Jose with. You You split up the Jose and no. I duo. No, what, what, if we you do, next. what if we do a show 
the week before the draft. Yeah. Yes. I like I like Nice's yeah. like suggestion. We do it right before the draft. We we should absolutely do uh, our first pop fantasy football show of the 2021 season the week before the draft. Kind of uh, get reacclimated, get everybody Go back, back on board. The draft list. Kind of, yeah, go, maybe maybe fuck around with a mock draft. Who knows? <laughs> But yeah, we could we could draft our divisions live on the air then. Sounds like a plan. Sounds great. So we're going to go to start our we're gonna draft our divisions and the first pick goes to the division winner with the worst record. We'll take the same way as we do with the draft. You inverse Makes sense. The order. Nice. So such that a, means such a fair So that means I Mr. have first draft pick in our divisions. <laughs> who, okay okay who yeah am I gonna, that who makes am I sense gonna pick? who am i gonna pick uh, <laughs> <sighs> what what a what a what a wonderful position to be in <laughs> who will be the number one pick <laughs> <laughs> fantastic right. so Finally, one thing I wanted to bring up for discussion. I have not put this in discussion in the Discord because I wanted us to talk about, about it. This is something that I believe Jose brought to us, if not Mel. The idea of a vampire league. So this is a big change. This is a drastic change. Now, from what I understand, what a vampire league is, if you play another team, if I play Mahoney, Mahoney beats me, Mahoney gets to propose a trade that I cannot deny. But, but there's like it, limits. Like it's only it's, a, from a player you played. Right. It's if you put a player on your bench, that player is safe. So if, yeah, if it has to be in, in the, the starting vampire lineup league, of that game, you lost. Exactly. What happens in the Vampire League is I play Tito, I beat Tito. I'm now able to pick any one of Tito's players that was in his starting lineup in the game I beat him. And offer him a trade of one of my players that was in my starting lineup for that player. So that means starting out starting out well is to your benefit. A slow start is really, really gonna screw you. Yeah. Like when I but went oh, also... six this year, I'm not coming back in a vampire league. I'm I'm fucking demolished. But not necessarily because the players that get dumped on you may end up blowing up. Like, like just imagine well, if somebody right. played Aaron Rodgers that week one, he didn't do good, and mm -hmm. he dumped him mm -hmm. for Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson did not do good, and Aaron Rodgers exploded. So, so it I'll could give you guys, bite you in the ass. I'll give you guys a scenario. I beat Mahoney in week one this year. Right? I, Mahoney started Tyrod Taylor. Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, Cooper Cup, Jarvis Landry, Janu Smith, Marquise Brown, Eagles defense, and Steve G Steven Gaskowski. Holy shit, remember Tyrod Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> Red Tyrod? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, well, you I probably would have taken Tyrod, right? No, I probably, <laughs> like, my team, I already had Zeke and Connor. I had Odell. I probably would have gone for, for um, a wideout or Eckler. Yeah, I'm not Eckler. You would have went for Eckler. Yeah, I would have gone for Eckler. Move. And, and, who did and that, shit. that would have blew up in Tito's yeah. face. And that would have blown up in my face. Imagine, like, if you beat Mary, you took Michael Thomas, and then he's on IR for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it, it's it's very interesting because it could go into your face. But then you get a guy, Tito gets Eckler, plays week two, loses, somebody steals Eckler from him. Yep, yep. Right. So do I have to trade him somebody who I started, or it could be anybody in my roster? No, somebody no, who I'm, started. Yeah, it, it's starting lineup for starting lineup, which which kind of – that's why I'm saying you're so, not just being able to dump some dude you picked up off the waiver wire well, and is like, I'm going to dump – unless you played him. Be prepared to have a lot of kickers traded. That's all I'm saying. In the chat, they're talking about uh, – Vetter says the vampire doesn't draft – and Mel says, right, he, she doesn't draft. I didn't think that there was one vampire. So, oh, maybe there's a starting vamp? Yeah, I thought. Vetter's saying that the vampire's team is undrafted waiver picks. So it's like the the coin from the league. Like there's a there's, so there's an empty team. Vampire? I think there's different ways to do it. 
I think there are way there. I think there are times where there's only one vampire. I think there are times when it's, um, you know, well, how everyone's would you decide involved. the vampire? Well, this is obviously something we have to look into a little more. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we're already determining that maybe this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll we'll go over it in detail and we'll talk about it in the Discord. So sounds no, good. No decision on how that. How do we even have? How would you even have one team not draft? Like, how would you even tell the draft to do that? Yeah, that's, again, uh, have to work out. Okay, okay. I think... Well, you I, would have to... If you have a 12-man league, you would just put that you have 11. I but think... But then the team's there. I think I'm getting the gist of what Vetter's saying. So, it's not Tito versus Mahoney and then... If Tito wins, he gets to take someone from Mahoney's team. It's the vampire is a team of waiver picks. And if the vampire beats you, then you have to trade someone to the vampire team. So the vampire is no one. Right. I don't think that's I, as I, fun as I, the one that yeah, we have. Like, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, the vampire's got to be someone. Yeah, we the whole point, I, I like know, the angle whatever. of being able to take someone else's player and see what happens each win. Right. Yeah. Well, to where to where we all do a draft, but by the end of the season, if you want your guy back, you're going to have to beat the person who stole him. Oh, that'd be real cool. Some prima nocta shit. I, I'm, so but also, would we, would we go, would we make it... Because obviously, if we're gonna do the vampire, we're gonna have to. We've already nixed the idea of having it just be a phantom team. So, would we institute? It has to be position for position. Huh? I don't think to where you position, don't have I, a guy I do agree. who dumps a kicker for Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I think dumping a kicker for Patrick Mahomes is perfectly fine if you started your kick. Like, it's got to be somebody in your starting lineup for somebody in their starting lineup. Well, yeah, but everyone's going to start a kicker. But well, then, yeah. but then, but then the kicking position is going to become no one gives a shit about the kicker because they're just going to grab a kicker, play a kicker, and then trade them for someone better. Hmm. It's going to be your kicker, your defense, so that are going to be the things that are constantly traded. Yeah, or and then that's have just going to be every everyone's just going to dump kicker. Well, then maybe we just set the ex- the rule of. It's not your kicker or your defense. Your kickers and your defense are not included. Well, that's what I'm saying. So they maybe just keep it position for position. Well, I don't think it has to be position or position to be like you are making a trade for. And, and I think it's only fair if you say it's not your kicker and it's not your defense. Then you can't steal the kicker or the defense. So you're playing with those other seven spots. So yeah, it would just you be want quarterbacks to send a wide and receiver flex. for a, one, a running back. Cool. But yeah. you're not sending me a kicker for my quarterback, you know? Like, okay. Yeah, I like that. Let's eliminate kicker and defense as, as if this happens. Yeah. Unless and you probably want... tight end because the tight end position is a big waste right, of time. Right, right. No, Unless I like you that. Want... Unless you're yeah. taking. Unless you want that defense, you know what I'm saying? So, so there so... are some defense worth taking. There are, but I, <laughs> I think in general, if we're going to say you can't send me your defense, then you shouldn't be able to take a defense either. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Like, okay. So, so I think that would have to be a sacrifice to. And looking up what a vampire league is, I got presented with another, a different league. It's called a guillotine league. <laughs> oh. So how <laughs> everyone guillotine... who loses has to be recircumcised. Oh wait a minute! <laughs> oh, yikes. Wait. This is how a guillotine league works. Each week, the lowest scoring team is eliminated from the league. Oh no! Oh my god! When a team is eliminated. Their entire roster is tossed back into the free agent pool for waiver Oh, my wires. God. Whoa. At the end of the season, the last team remaining is the champion. Wow. How does that – got to have the right number of teams then. I'm down for doing that if that's like a side thing. Yeah, that we should almost... in, in, in each week we lose somebody. That's like an uh, eliminator pool. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, like I could almost see a side bet challenge of like each week the lowest team the team with the lowest score is tossed out of our side bet and at the end whatever team survives uh you know 
they win some kind of special prize. Like that would be a fun. Uh, okay, yeah, that I like. Thing to do. Yeah, I don't want to kick them out of the whole league and be like, "Fuck <laughs> off!" In week one, take a break. Okay, well, well uh, so let me ask: Would we be able to draft one draft, but set up that same draft into two of those leagues so that ESPN kind of keeps track of all that? On its well, own, does that I have like? We'd be able to keep track of it. I, I, yeah, we'd I wouldn't even know how to easy. set up. We we would have to keep track of it on paper. We we, yeah. we wouldn't be able to set that up on ESPN. Paper. Don't even worry about. <laughs> don't even worry about keeping track of stuff. I can keep I said, track of anything. Said, what the fuck is paper? Yeah. Yeah, but Vetter says he's been researching the Vampire Leagues for a while, so he's going to post some links in the Discord. Perfect. Nice. Thank you, Vetter. Wonderful. All right, so let's uh, let's close this out, boys. Last show, last show of the 2020 Pop Fantasy Football season. Uh, be sure to download the entire 2020 season of Pop Fantasy Football and the Panels on Pages podcast on your favorite podcast app. Be sure to smash that like button. All you in the chat right now, smash that like button, even though I, I you couldn't hear us for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> be, be sure to subscribe to Panels on Pages on YouTube at youtube.com slash panels on pages. You can rewatch every episode of Pop Fantasy Football. You can watch the Panels on Pages podcast live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. This week, we're ranking every Marvel movie ever made in a in like a reverse draft style. So that's going to be very fun. And then we got 10 years of ground baking, ground baking Panels on Pages <laughs> video content on there. Uh, no one does it better. Check out the new panelsonpages.com and buy our merch at merch.panelsonpages.com. We released six new designs for the new year, so go check those out. And join the Discord at discord.panelsonpages.com. Get involved with the discussion in the Pop Fantasy Football channel. And as always, we'll leave you with a quote from the great Vince Lombardi. At many a moment on many a day, I am convinced that pro football must be a game for madmen, and I must be one of them. So, for Tito Cruz, Dan Mahoney, Jose Guzman, and myself, Jason Nyes, thanks for joining us for this season of Pop Fantasy Football. Thanks to everyone who participated and listened. Congrats to all of tonight's winners, and we'll see you next fall. All things fucked. <laughs>